So it's looking like the battle over braced pistols is going to be a bit of a long one, and with the ATF's arbitrary May 31st deadline looming, I thought it would be a good time for an update video. Here we'll talk a little bit about where the various lawsuits are at, then go over some of the options y'all might be considering on what to do with these little Douglases. Timestamps will be down below. Without further ado, let's get stuck in. So there are quite a few lawsuits pending in various federal district courts on the pistol brace question. There's a pile in Texas, one in North Dakota, and of course the one we filed here in Florida. A lot of these cases have already seen the filing of motions for preliminary injunction, basically in an, in an attempt to stop the enforcement of the pistol brace rule before it takes full effect on May 31st. Well, March 30th saw the first ruling on one of these motions came down from Judge Reed O'Connor denying the request, stating somewhat paradoxically that the plaintiffs had not demonstrated a likelihood of success on the merits, but also recognizing that winning at the summary judgment stage was possible. Some other Texas cases have seen the courts directing the parties to explain how the March 30th ruling affected their motions for a preliminary injunction. Of course, there are a total of seven or so cases, and it only takes one to be successful. But the question of whether or not we'll see the ATF rule quash before May 31st is growing dodgier. And there's still a ton of people with braced pistols who don't even know what's going on. That's why I think it's important to go over all of the options in a little more detail here, and also for you guys to help spread the word here. We do not want to see people unwittingly made felons overnight. Now, before I start hearing a bunch of whining in the comments that I'm like kowtowing to the ATF, remember I literally brought one of these lawsuits. Also, it's kind of fascinating seeing people like chest pounding and raw rawing saying they will not comply over the pistol brace thing when a pistol brace is, well, you know, anyway. The way I see it, we've got three options to go over and we'll talk about each one in decent detail. One, changing the configuration. Two, submitting a Form 1 and ultimately converting the firearm to an SBR. And three, destroying the weapon. So let's get in and start with option one, reconfiguring the firearm. Of course, this may be the option you're forced to take if you're in a locale that bans SBRs anyway. Naturally, you start with just taking the brace thingy off. If you want to strictly follow the rule, which I remind you is a total overreach and we're going to do our best to fight, you've got to go a step further than that. The rule suggests that if you're going to reconfigure the firearm to either modify the brace or the firearm to not accept the brace. That is, of course, if you're keeping the barrel length less than 16 inches. So just in some way, making the two, the gun and the brace, no longer compatible. The easiest thing to do here would be to just kind of like get rid of the brace. Uh, but if you want to be extra, you could cut the pick rail or, uh, or just like cut the brace or like, you know, fill it with peanut butter or something. All right, buddy. Sorry, it's come to this. You could also put a 16 inch barrel on it, which is easy for some firearms. For firearms it's not easy with, there's the option of welding, silver soldering, or blind pinning an extension to the barrel, which could make it look pretty silly. You know, like a little, little anteater boy. There's a lot of questions about and a lot of bad advice that floats around on the subject of muzzle extensions. There are a few ways to permanently secure a muzzle device. There are also a lot of different interpretations of muzzle devices and extensions. The main question of whether or not something is a muzzle extension is whether it completely encircles the barrel at the point it connects with the barrel. Yes, there are some bayonets which encircle the barrel. Yes, bayonets are a thing that belong on every firearm. And yes, Permanently attaching a bayonet as a means of extending the barrel is the single most hilarious, heavy metal, and hardcore way of complying with this stupid-ass rule. Remember, the funny triangle ones are really hard to sew up. 
Next is option two, submitting a form one, which I understand many of you don't want to do. It certainly has its drawbacks, countervailed with some minor benefits. Again, this is all up to you. I've got a whole video on navigating the Amnesty eForms website. I recommend you check it out if you want to tackle the Form 1 and fingerprinting process yourself. Now, if you're in the subset of people who don't want to deal with the eForms website, fingerprinting and photos, you know, by yourself, but also want to get a tax stamp, Silencer Shop's Form 1 service does work with the Amnesty filing, so you wouldn't have to pay this tax stamp, just their little fee. If you're considering getting a surpriser slash whisper pickle anyway, and you fall in this camp, it's probably a decent idea to get set up with an account over at Silencer Shop and use their kiosk for the photos and fingerprints to take some of the headache and possibilities of errors away. Also, given the fact that the deadline is looming, it doesn't hurt that your form would get looked over by a compliance specialist before it's sent to ATF. The way Silencer Shop's submission system works is really actually fascinating, and I hope to do a video about the more technical back end of it sometime in the future. But if you want to take this option, get set up with them by the 26th of April. Now, option three, destroying the firearm. If you've ingested enough soy to actually change your genetic structure and murder your thyroid, this might be the option that appeals to you. There are several neat ways to destroy your braced firearm one of which is to take the brace off and give it to me. Another is to take the brace off or separate the receivers and give them to someone taller or otherwise superior to you. Of course, there is also the option to shoot your gun. All right, buddy. Sorry it's come to this. Finally, of course, you could hand it to law enforcement, which don't, or you could do nothing, roll the dice, and see what happens. Frankly, how this gets enforced going forward is going to be a case study on just how aggressively anti-human rights your local law enforcement are. It's not a dice roll I'd recommend playing. All that said, I do have pretty high hopes for these lawsuits going forward. But what you got to remember is, absent the preliminary injunction stage, these could take years. One denied injunction doesn't mean much in the grand scheme of things, and I think ATF has overstepped so aggressively here that it will be hard for the government to carry the day at the end of this nationwide. I do think it's important that we spread the word on this, though, to prevent more Americans from becoming unwitting felons. That's something that I've regrettably had to see with my own eyes. People locked in cages for peaceably owning something they bought in open commerce, torn from their families, and in many instances, physically torn to shreds by an overreaching, aggressively out of control government. It's kind of sickening, really. I, I can't thank you guys enough for all of the support you've shown me in our lawsuit, and also the work channel partner Second Amendment Foundation has been doing. I've been pleased to see how much cooperation there's been on the subject. Even Silencer Shop has been donating 10% of their Form 1 service proceeds to SAF and other groups. As you guys know, Second Amendment Foundation has been fighting in this arena for over 50 years and has even helped me with some of my cases. To learn more or to donate, go to bit.ly slash SAFbusters or check the link in the description. Thank you guys all so much for coming and for helping out in this fight. Again, the battle is far from over, and I have no plans on giving up for my part. I just thought some more information might help. Outs of prevention and all that. Anyway, y'all take care.